Cloud computing started a new era that enables companies and individuals to use various computer services like CPU, memory, etc. through online platforms. In today's market, there are various cloud service providers like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, etc. who are in a constant competition with each other. However, in today's session, we'll be comparing two of the best cloud providers that is AWS and Azure. So if you are a cloud computing enthusiast and would like to know which one is the best, here is Vajiha from Edureka with a whole new session on AWS versus Azure. We'll start off our discussion by understanding what exactly is AWS followed by Azure. Then we'll be comparing them based on the various services that they provide such as compute, storage and database. Following that, we'll take a look at the pricing structure of each of these, licensing, big data services, availability zones and the market share and growth rate. What exactly is AWS? AWS stands for Amazon Web Services. It was put to sea by Amazon in July 2002. Many of its services are fabricated on top of open source technologies like the Linux kernel, Zen, and MySQL. As of 2020, AWS comprises of more than 175 products and services. AWS provides services in the form of building blocks, and these building blocks can be used to create and deploy any type of application in the cloud. These services or building blocks are designed to work with each other and result in applications that are sophisticated and highly scalable. So now that you have a brief idea of what is AWS, let's move on and take a look at what is Azure. Microsoft Azure is a cloud computing platform created by Microsoft. It is used by developers and IT professionals to build, deploy and manage applications through their global network of data centers. Azure came into existence in October 2008 with the secret name Project Red Dog. Then, on the 1st of February 2010, it was revealed as Windows Azure before being renamed to Microsoft Azure on the 25th of March 2014. Windows server systems form the base of this cloud layer. Moreover, it is a customized version of the hypervisor. As of 2020, Azure offers around 600 services. So now that you have a brief idea of AWS and Azure, let's move on and have a head-to-head -head comparison between each of these. Compute services. Compute is basically a hosting model for resources like CPU, memory, etc. on which the applications actually run. Now these compute services can be of four types. That is, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, function as a service, and hybrid services. Infrastructure as a service. This service is based on the concept of an instance or a virtual machine. In other words, an instance is a combination of all resources like servers, networks and hardware in an indirect way. Subsequently, the virtual machine provided by AWS and Azure are tailored to suit different use cases. Let us discuss AWS EC2 instances and Azure virtual machines. In AWS EC2 instances, the VM is stored in a persistent storage called as EPS. This instance is created using Amazon Machine Image. On the other hand, in Azure Virtual Machines, VM is stored in persistent storage called as Blob Storage. And to create the instance, virtual hot disks are used. Platform as a Service This service provides operating systems, applications, and databases. For example, the AWS Elastic Beanstalk and Azure App Service. The AWS Elastic Beanstalk dashboard allows you to monitor the health of the entire application. However, you can only deploy web applications to it. On the other hand is Azure App Service. In Azure App Service, separate products like Azure Monitor are available to monitor the health of an application. You can deploy both mobile and web applications over here. Now moving on towards Function as a Service. This is basically serverless computing. In other words, the enterprise does not have to go through the difficulties of constructing and maintaining the platform. As a result, you can simply develop, execute, and manage application tasks while the service provider handles the server. As far as pricing is concerned, the amount of resources used by the application determines how much the user has to pay. In AWS, this service can be achieved through AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda supports various programming languages such as Java, Go, PowerShell, Python, c -sharp, Ruby, etc. And it also provides a runtime API for others. Serverless compute in Azure can be achieved through Azure Functions. Just like AWS Lambda, 
Azure functions also support various programming languages such as Java, C Sharp, JavaScript, PowerShell, Python, etc. Now talking about a hybrid environment. Hybrid cloud architectures help companies merge the on-campus operations with the cloud. Now this in AWS can be achieved through AWS Outpost and in Azure, you can do it through Azure Stack. AWS Outpost is relatively new and it is suitable for on-premise and public cloud. On the other hand, the Azure Stack is old and has many variants. It also supports private and third-party clouds. So now moving on towards the next comparison factor, that is the storage services. Storage, as the name suggests, is used to store data in the cloud with the ability to scale as and when required. This data can be stored anywhere. Both AWS and Azure provide a number of storage services. In AWS, storage services can be achieved through storage types such as the Simple Storage Service or S3 and AWS Glacier. In AWS S3, unstructured data such as media files, log files, etc. are available through the server requests. AWS Glacier can be used for data archival and it is cheap as well. However, the retrieval time is relatively more. On the other hand, Azure provides blob storage and Azure Cool Blob Storage. Blob stands for binary language object. It stores documents, multimedia files, or .exe files. You can privately access the data or share it publicly. Azure Cool Blob Storage is used for data archival and it's relatively costly, but the retrieval time is comparatively less. Database services. The database domain is used to provide reliable, relational, and non-relational database instances. For relational database, AWS provides RDS, whereas Azure provides SQL database. For NoSQL services, AWS supports DynamoDB and Azure supports Cosmos DB. So now moving on towards the pricing structure of these cloud platforms. Both AWS and Azure offer pay-as-you-go model. In AWS, the Windows Server Virtual Machine is comparatively costly. Virtual machines are charged per hour. The price of the Kinesis Analytics Processing Unit is 0.11 per hour. In Azure, Windows Server Virtual Machine is cheap due to the Azure Hybrid Benefit Plan and free security updates. Virtual machines are charged per second. The price of the Stream Analytics Processing Unit is 7.271 per hour. So now coming towards the licensing. A software license is a legal tool that allows people to use the software and redistribute it. In AWS, the license manager supervises software licenses and it is free of cost. Microsoft software license can be brought with or without software assurance. In Azure, Azure Active Directory supervises software license but has three pricing models that is free, premium, and pay as you go. You can move licenses to Azure through software assurance only except Windows products. Big Data Services Now, big data is a term that is used for a collection of data sets that are large and complex, which is difficult to store and process using available data management tools or traditional data processing applications. Both AWS and Azure provide different big data services to handle both structured and unstructured data. For big data processing, AWS provides Elastic MapReduce, whereas Azure provides HD Insight. For analytics, AWS provides Kinesis Analytics and Azure provides Stream Analytics. For visualization, AWS provides QuickSight and Azure provides Power BI. Availability Zones These zones protect the application and data from the data center failures. They are present within a region which consists of a set of data centers. Currently, AWS has 77 availability zones and 24 launched regions. Azure, on the other hand, has 60 plus regions that exist with each having three availability zones. So now moving on towards the last comparison factor that is market share and growth rate. When it comes to the market share, AWS leads the market by 32.4%. However, its growth is monotonous. Azure, on the other hand, is 17.4% of the share, but it is rapidly flourishing. To conclude, I would say that it is really difficult to compare AWS and Azure as both continue to launch new services, new pricing structures, new products, and the current differences may not be relevant in a few months. So this brings us to the end of the session. I hope you have enjoyed and learned something new.
In case you have any doubts or queries, please do let me know in the comment section and I will revert to you at the earliest. We'll be back with more and more exciting sessions, but till then, goodbye and take care.